What's up? What's good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Wednesday and Canada? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. And I hope each and every one of you are doing great. I want to say thank you to each one of my 2,525 subscribers. You guys mean the world to me. The movement is real and the movement is growing. And it's just important stuff that needs to be said. If you could please hit that like button. If you could please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get all these videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help, and support the channel. So today we have my friend Liz on. Liz, hello. Thank you for coming on. And I, Hi, honestly, thanks for having me. No problem. I feel like, you know, a lot of the time on my channel, the perspective is from the convict perspective. And, you know, I feel like a lot of time that's an unfair, uh, it's unfair to only look at that side because there's so much that goes along with it. So I brought you on because you're in a situation that I feel is, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot for somebody to deal with. And I feel like because you're kind of at like, you know, you, you would probably fit the most difficult case scenario. And I feel like because you're in that scenario, you can offer the right perspective. So uh, if you'd just like to kind of introduce yourself and what it is you're going through, and then we'll kind of take it from there. Yeah, for sure. So my name's Liz, and um, I am in a serious relationship with um, an incarcerated person that is a lifer. And we are struggling through that journey at the moment. Yeah, yeah and, and, and obviously that's a that's a massive commitment. And, you know, I, I really want to praise you for that because uh, I know that there's a lot of difficult things that are going to come with that, like, you know, family issues and just a lot of things that are going to come with that. And for you to be able to ride through that because you believe in somebody, I, I, you know, I totally believe in that and, and I appreciate that. But I know you as a person probably have boundaries and probably set limits of what you'll accept. But yeah. I, I have a question. What would you say has been the most difficult part of this commitment for you up to this point? Um, definitely. Um, the Well, first of all, right now, currently, because of COVID, there's no touch visits. There's no PFEs. So we're very limited. And that takes a huge strain on a relationship, um, despite the incarceration. So that's been uh, very challenging, for sure. Um, other than that, I think it is um, having to, when you love someone so much, their pain is your pain. Um, I didn't do anything wrong. I don't have a criminal record, but the person I love does. And this is serious stuff. And I, um, it's, it's difficult to make a decision to ride through that um you do the time as well for sure yeah and i 100 percent agree you know i've been incarcerated many times and you know not nearly as long but try trying to be in a relationship through that can be very difficult so when you're waiting for responses court dates sentences yeah. and and i understand that you had to wait for you know you had to go through sentencing and then through appeal and just stuff like that how do you cope with the stress of just waiting for these dates that obviously, you know, the system just takes forever. So how do you deal with that stress? Um, th the hardest thing is the unknown, right? As you know, there's no release date. There's no um, really, we should have something to look forward to, right? But we don't. Um, so th you don't really there's nothing really you can do you just you hug it and you you ride it out Matt like it's um I'm not really sure how to answer that but um yeah it's it doesn't it's like Groundhog Day every day you know what I mean yeah and and it's Groundhog Day from the other side too yeah and yeah. you know obviously when you're in that kind of a relationship and there's, like you said, limitations, especially right now with COVID and stuff, I know that that can create tensions in relationships. And would you not say that unless your relationship is 
like rock hard solid that it's probably not going to work, right? It's, like it, No, no, no. It's probably not going to work. I mean, um, it looks really exciting for the first month or so. Um, and people jump into it, you know, um, jail seems exciting, intriguing. But once you really get into it and there's serious feelings and you real realize it's like, this is real life stuff. Um, it's a whole different ball game for sure. And you, you, it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah. So I understand that, you know, I, I want to ask this question. It may be a difficult question, but I want to ask it. I understand that recently he lost his appeal. Yeah. And yeah. I know that must be super difficult, but it's not the end of the road for you. Mm -hmm. You have, now the ability to appeal again at the Supreme Court. Now, what kind of weight do you expect for that? And if that, you know, if that doesn't work out for you, do you say that it's like 100% that you would like 100% be able to cope with that forever, uh, that situation? Uh, yeah, so Supreme Court, um, we're supposed to hear, well, COVID again, um, but um, 90 days for some sort of reply. And um, yeah, to answer your question, I'm, I'm in it for the long haul. So um, yeah, I'm not abandoning him at any point of this ride. And that's uh, something I've decided works for me and my life and our relationship and I'm solid to that so we just have to take whatever next step is happening and deal with it for sure well I just want to once again commend you for that that takes a lot and that's very you know it's it's a very commendable thing to do to ride for somebody like that because it rarely rarely ever happens especially in that kind of a situation you know I know that my brother is a lifer and as soon yeah. as he was charged, his girlfriend abandoned him, jumped ship, immediately yeah. testified against him and like just totally like, you know, like I don't personally get that side of it. But, you know, yeah. there's also yeah. that side of it. But I just want to ask you. So obviously there's a lot there's a lot of guys that are locked up that get involved with women. And even I'm sure guys that are outside that get involved with women locked up on, on lesser scale, I'm sure. Yeah. But a lot of the yeah. time, it's, like, connections through prison and, like, pen pal sites and friends and stuff like that. But could you just kind of give a breakdown of how much commitment it really is? Like, how you're – like, what you have to go through daily in order to make your relationship work, just so people understand. Because I don't want anybody – I would rather somebody not get committed to somebody at all than commit with them for a short amount of time and then dip out because that's more painful. That's more painful. For the person sure. locked up. So just, just maybe just give a breakdown of how, you know, how much time and effort it takes out of your day at each oh. and every Oh, man. Okay, so um, the, it's six hours. We're lucky because sometimes, depending where you are incarcerated, the phone times are different. He has a little bit of leverage because he's a lifer. So um, I'm on the phone six hours a day uh, with him. So that's a huge commitment. I also have three young children. So that takes a huge chunk out of my day to, to give to him. Um, and um, yeah, you've, it's a huge, huge, huge commitment. If you're ready to do it, you are going to send money orders you're writing letters you're sending new pictures you are on the phone um you know you have to be aware of your emotions because if you have a bad day and you're saying like come home come home and you start complaining um or even um are upset about something you have to be um weary of the other person incarcerated because it, it they don't want to hear it they they you can't really talk about time because we don't know anything about time we're just doing time if that makes sense right yeah um yeah it's it's a huge commitment like i said it's not for the faint of heart um 
all of my friends think I'm crazy. I've lost a lot of friends due to this. Um, but I'm committed. I love the guy. He made a mistake and he's paying for that. And I'll see him on the flip side. Like, so I'm just waiting for that moment and you got to do what you got to do. I mean, the great thing is that we're in Canada and yeah. as a lifer, you can get PFEs and trailer visits and yeah. you at some yeah. point will yeah. be able to establish your relationship in a much better way that at least, you know, you'll have some level of intimacy and some level of closeness where at least it kind of tides you off and, you know, and you're able routine. to. A routine of that too. Like every it, six weeks PFB, then you get into that, right? So yeah, for sure. And you're going to get closer emotionally at that point, right? Like yeah. it, it, it. Now, this is the thing a lot of people maybe don't see before they get into this kind of a situation also is that if that person on the other side of the phone is having a bad day, mm -hmm. you are going to absorb that. There's yeah. no doubt about it because you can't, you can't display that kind of frustration with people inside. Like yeah. it'll come across as weak or even unnecessary because everybody's going through it. So yeah. a lot of the time you're going to place that burden on the people that you love. Yeah. Now, I don't know what your relationship like is like like that, right? But would you say that it's fair to say that at times it can be difficult? Like, it, it can be difficult, abs like, absorbing some of that frustration. Oh, yeah. I call him an asshole, like, five times a day because he's he's angry about things, but he you can't just, like you said, you, you said it perfectly, um... I'm the person that I will get the brunt of that uh, bad um, day, right? And you you just, you got to deal with it. You say, you're being an asshole. I don't want to deal with it. I'm having a shitty day. I miss you too, but let's chill. Um, also, you know, things like, obviously, yard time. When that gets taken away, that's another frustration on them that gets taken out on a significant other. Um, so there's all these little layers of things that you don't have any idea about until you are in it, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and a lot of the time what ends up happening and I've been there is that, you know, somebody might, might believe they want to commit for you. Right. And they might believe that they want to be there for you. But when that uh, comes out, you know, say just one day, it's just going to end a lot of the time. Right. So with you. Your situation is obviously very different because you have, yours is a much more committed relationship and you've thought it through. I've had conversations with you about it. I know how much you think about this stuff. Um, so I just want to say that, you know, every convict out there wishes that they had someone who could ride for them like you. And, and I, I just want, you know, I hope he understands how lucky he has it because a lot of the time when you're on that side of the fence, you don't really see it that way. You know, you kind of yeah. see it like obviously they're suffering with you, but you obviously look at yourself as the one who's suffering the most because you're behind the wall. Yeah. Now, I do have another question for you. How is this impact? Like, how would you say your family has reacted to this situation? Oh, um, it uh, it took a it took a minute to be honest, um, but they were like, oh no, she's just having, she's just going through a phase. I was going through a divorce when I met him. So they thought it was just like a, you know, a casual thing. Oh, she's dating an inmate. She thinks it's like fun and games. But then I stuck to my guns about it and we fell in love and I have defended him every day to anyone and people have dipped out obviously um my parents are amazing people so they have seen my growth in our relationship mm -hmm. and um yeah it definitely it, it's tricky and you you always feel like you have to prove something mm -hmm. about that person and you're like well he's an amazing person and they're like but he's in he's in prison but no he's an amazing person mom you know <laughs> yeah um, yeah 
And I, I stick by that and I'll stick by that all day, every day. He is an amazing person and I'm grateful to have um, met him and I will ride till I die. Well, I think a lot of people in society don't really understand that everybody kind of has a breaking point. Everybody, everybody makes mistakes. And just because you did something wrong doesn't mean you're a bad person. Like, obviously, I have a brother who I love very much who killed two people. And I would never turn my back on him or say he's a bad person because I know him. Like, yeah. I know how he thinks. I know how where his heart is. He was a young person who was in a bad situation who thought that that was the best way to handle it because he was dumb. His brain wasn't even developed yet. He was a kid. Yeah. And uh, to say that that's a person for the rest of their life is just somebody uneducated doesn't really understand. And I know you know that because you've committed to somebody because you love the way they are. You love the way the person they are. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Have you been to visit yet at all in the penitentiary? Yeah. Yeah. Um. I went a few times and then I. Um just as we were about to get PFE's COVID hit. So, yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> yeah, so can you just can you just explain a little bit about the procedure of when you go to visit? Yeah, I, um, I was terrified. I'm not going to lie. I would be okay because um, I've had three children and I have three boys, so I'm pretty tough. But um, I was terrified and um, I was told, you know, you come in, um, you got to get swabbed, make sure, clean your jewelry, this, that, put it in, clean it the night before, sanitize this. Like I was following every step. Um, he's like, oh, there's going to be dogs and this. Um, like I was prepared for everything. Got out of the car walked into the um the building and it was like literally nothing it was it, you walk in they swab your coat they swab whatever uh you go through the scanners i mean the the swab machines are bullshit so you never know what's going to happen there yeah um, total scam yeah so you never know if you're going to get in or not um but as far as it's pretty casual where i where i'm visiting um, yeah, it's, the first time is hard. After that, it's, it's like, it's no big deal. Yeah, and if they get to see you and they don't think that you're a troublemaker, yeah. they're not going to give you a hard time. You know, and, I, and, and the reality is, like, in this situation, in, especially, like, with people that are doing shorter amounts of time, I feel that they'll take those risks a lot more you know yeah. and uh you know i just know you're you know you're not that i'm not even gonna talk about it because i just know you're smarter uh anyway so i i don't want to keep you on too long but i would just say as a last question if you could give any advice to somebody who was thinking about getting into that personal situation what would that advice be um I would say that you need to be in a, a state of uh, a mental health position uh, within yourself that you're willing to take on a whole other person's issues, um, responsibilities, communicating with lawyers and all of that. You're taking on a whole, whole other um a whole other person's um, emotional burden yeah thanks um so be prepared for that and if you're look after yourself first um and sometimes I don't and I always worry about him before I worry about myself but that's my nature and that doesn't always work the best and um you know be be aware of what this really is like if you're this is a long bid this isn't a couple months you know it's not fun and games this is this is a life sentence so 
Um, this is a person's life. This is serious. This is my life. This is my children's life. Um, I take it seriously. I'm responsible about my decisions and just be aware. And if it's not making you happy, you got to go. Like you don't have to stay in the relationship. Yeah. So, you know, obviously I want to say thank you for bringing me on and obviously I bring people on and share their stories. So people don't necessarily have to go through these things. Maybe they can learn from these videos before that, or maybe it does give them the knowledge that they need to get through this. Stuff. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get all these videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help, and support the channel. So thank you, Liz. Thanks, thank you for Matt. coming on. I really appreciate it. And, you know, I just, like I said, I, I just want to say that it's it's super commendable that you do what you do every day and uh, sacrifice so much for somebody that you love. And that says a lot about somebody. So, you know, I just want to say that... Uh, Keep doing what you're doing and good things are going to happen for you because when you put out good energy like that, good and good things are going to happen back. So for I sure, genuinely sure. feel that's going to be the case for you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And say hi to your beautiful girl for me. I will. No problem. Okay. Talk All right. Thank you, you very much. Okay. Bye.